Hey, I'm Colin and I'm with Koima Egg and I'm an engineer that's been working on this Colab product. When you purchase your Colab light system, you'll receive an instruction packet similar to this, but today I'm also going to run through the installation instructions with you. Let's get started. Thank you for your purchase of this Koima Egg product. This product is for use with either John Deere 8000 or 9000 series and Kloss 494 and above series harvesters. Your Colab light system will need to be installed, set up, and operated per these instructions. The first step in installing the Colab light system is to choose a position along the spout. This position should line up with the end of the header when the spout is in the operating position and it should clear the spout rest when it is in the transport position. Use the holes on the spout light bracket itself to mark two holes on the bottom of the spout. Drill those holes out to 3 eighths of an inch. Install the bracket and use the arrow for a guide. It should be noted that the arrow is pointing forward for blowing to the right hand. The second step is to plug the spout cable into the side of the spout light box. Use the provided cable ties to secure the cable along the side of the spout. As you can see here, we've removed the side panels and we follow the bundle along the side of the spout all the way down into the maintenance area behind the cab of the harvester. From there, we route the cable in a position that it will not snag or catch or pinch or pull when the spout is being rotated throughout the entire range of motion. Once we're done there, we can replace the panels and make sure that the, the cable ends inside of the weather strip of the cab. Step 3. To install the fender light assembly on the side rail, select one of the pipe hangers in a bag that fits the diameter of the tube of the handrail. This will be dependent on whether you have a John Deere or a Kloss harvester. Once you're finished with that, run the fender cable into the cab through the weather strip and use cable ties as needed to tidy up the area. Step 4. Installing the header light. First, we're going to choose a position that will not catch on corn along the bull horn, as we call it, of the header itself. So we're going to adjust the swivel and position and tighten the bolts to ensure that the light will not slide up and down the, the tube or that it will not pivot once we have the position that we selected. Next, we will run the header cable along the rail to the header to the throat. We're going to run it along the top side. We need to make sure that the cable doesn't catch when folding and unfolding the header. It helps to unfold and fold it a few times as you add cable ties to make sure that there are no joints where the cable can be pinched or caught. Once this is done, we're going to attach the extension cable at the throat. We're going to use a position for that that is convenient to release once we are going to uh, disconnect the header. Finally, we will run the extension cable back to the other side of the cab through the weather strip and into the cab. Step number five, installation of the Y harness in both John Deere and Kloss. First, we need to locate the position for each of these. For John Deere, the Y harness plug will be inserted into a housing on the bottom side of a black cast housing that is connected to the spout ring. So inside the maintenance area, you will unplug the default John Deere plug and insert the opposite ends of our Y harness into each side. For Kloss, it is the same, except instead of under a black housing, there is a plastic gear on the right-hand side. On the underhand side, of that plastic gear, there is a plug that you can also remove and then insert our version of the Y harness into the corresponding receptacles. From there, we can route the cable into the cab. Step six, the control box installation. The control box has a bolt mounting pattern for a RAM mount 202 size C ball, which is purchased separately. Using either this or another method, mount to the rail or a position within the reach of the operator station inside the cab. Step number seven, power plugs. For John Deere or for Kloss, there are two different positions where the power plug might be inserted. For John Deere, the power strip is located behind the operator's right foot along the bottom of the floor tray. For Kloss, the plug is located along the back of the right-hand side of the operator's seat. From there, you will plug the cable in and then route the cable to the power plug that is located on the bottom side of the control box. Step number eight. Find a position for the manual hand switch box, which is included within every Colab system. Find a position that suits your uh, liking and then ins use the provided Velcro strip to secure it in position and be able to use whenever you're ready for a manual operation. An alternate upgrade option is a foot pedal switch, which is shown here. Step number nine. Connect each cable plug in the cab to a corresponding socket on the bottom of the control box. The individual plugs are all labeled and only one type can go into each different plug. It does not matter which of the light plugs go into the light sockets, they will all work the same. Now that we have finished the installation, we will go through an initial setup period to help you understand how to use the Colab light system. Firstly, once all parts are installed and the cables are plugged in, we can start the harvester up. Power is only available to the control box when the key is in the on position. Flip the power switch to the on position on the control box. 
Step two, lights will flash on the box a few seconds after switching on. This is normal. This is to indicate that power is being received to the box and the system is booting up. First, we're going to toggle the switch to the manual mode on the bottom right hand of the control box. Using the rocker switch box provided, the manual switch, or the potential upgrade for the foot switch, we can turn the lights on and off as long as each button is held. This is useful for a number of different operations. For instance, if you want to move a driver ahead a little bit or back a little bit without moving the spout. Step three, to calibrate the light zones, flip the switch mode to auto. From there, we're going to start calibrating the automatic spout position sensor. First, swing the spout to the furthest position forward. This is typically as far forward as the operator can swing the spout, but it could be in a slightly different position if you so choose. This is going to be the front of the red zone. Press and hold the top button, which should have a red light, for two seconds or until all of the buttons flash. Swing the spout back to desired back of red zone. Press and hold the next button down for two seconds or until all the buttons flash. The next zone we're going to program, we're going to swing the spout back through the range that we would ideally have the truck driving next to us in, which is typically going to be about 90 degrees to the right hand or left hand of the harvester. Once we get back a little bit further than we would prefer, we're going to set the beginning of the green zone. Press and hold the third button down for two seconds or until all buttons flash. Then finally, to set the back end of the green zone, we'll swing the spout back to the furthest reach that we could possibly have it in normal operation. Press and hold the bottom button for two seconds or until all the lights flash. Now that we have all of the zones calibrated, we can swing the spout through the ranges. If we wish to change or a start or stop point of any of the ranges, simply move the spout to the desired position and press and hold that corresponding button and a new position will be stored by the system. It helps to keep the spout stationary when you're calibrating a new position. Next, we will talk about operation and how to use the system to its full potential. Operating the Colab system is very simple. Move the spout and let the Colab system tell your truck drivers where to go. The Colab system works best when the harvester operator and the truck operators all understand what the signals mean. See the QR code or Koima Egg's website for videos on how to use the entire Colab system. Once the auto mode has been set up, the system will remember the positions set for each light zone even if the truck is powered off, which is helpful for transporting or switching between manual and auto modes. The button located on the top right hand of the control box is a signal button that you can use with your truck drivers to signal them that they're either full or another predetermined signal. The manual mode can be used to signal truck drivers to pull ahead or slow down without needing to move the spout. Simply flip between manual and auto mode to enable this feature. It should be noted that the harvester can be set up to spout to the left hand side by simply spinning the lights around and installing them on the other hand side and calibrating it just as you would the right hand side. Finally, the channel select knob, which you may have noticed on the front of the control box, is an upcoming wireless signal remote. Follow Koima Ag on our social media to show more information on this as we bring it online. We hope this instructional video for setting up your Colab light system is beneficial and that you have a safe and productive harvest season. Thank you.